guys, episode four of Hashtag Just Talk. Still haven't got an intro. We'll work on it. We'll get there. Alfie, welcome. How you doing, man? I'm good, thank you. I'm very, I'm very, very happy after the weekend. Ah, oh, brilliant. We'll get on to that. Luke, and welcome. How are you, man? All good, mate. How you doing? How you doing, Alfie? You all right? I'm good, thanks, mate. How, how are you both? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, let's just dive straight into it, shall we? Shall we? Uh, after 20 minutes, Spurs three, West Ham nil. Alf, I genuinely was buzzing because I had Harry Kane as my captain. I just want to start and say, Alf, like, did you have any hope going into this game, going away to Tottenham? I know you come off the back of two very good results, but, you know, the form that Tottenham have not, I know they haven't been in the greatest form, but the form Harry Kane's been in alongside Song, and, you know, your defending's not that great. Saying that, you did keep two very good clean sheets against Wolves and Leicester. What was your thoughts going into the game? Going into the game, I honestly fancied us to win it because we got two great results against Leicester and Wolves. And we always up our game against Spurs, home or away. Going into the game, I, was, I, I thought I fancied them to nick it, nick, 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 nick it at the end. Not to win it comfortably, but I thought it would be, it would be a close, close win at the end. Well, how did you feel twenty minutes after that? Enough. I was so angry. I was so angry. I mean, the, the, the defending was was mediocre at best. I think um, we have to compliment Kane. Kane has just been so good since the restart. I don't know if this is yeah. the Mourinho effect. Mourinho just seems to get seem to get the best out of certain players. You see it in the documentary and All or Nothing. He had that chat with him when he first came in, and you know it just seems to work wonders. When he was three 0 down, Alf, what was you feeling? Was you feeling this could have been seven or eight? Could this? I thought it was going to be six 0 I thought after the third goal, I thought this is going to be six 0 We're not big. This is going to be a cricket a cricket score. <laughs> Uh, well, you seem to have managed to make it 3-1 and then a 3-2 with a little bit of glimmer of hope from a mistake from Sanchez. When you did make it 3-1, did you think it was just a consolation? Did you think yeah. you could actually nick something here? Or at I what thought, point thought, did you genuinely start to believe? Second, uh, as soon as the second goal went in, I, me and my brother both said, we're going we're gonna to score. We're, we're going to get a result. Because once once the first goal goes in, the thing about Moyes, he was, he was, he's always installed a belief in West Ham players but players love playing for him so you know after that second goal went in momentum's with us and you can see you can see the players wanting, wanting it so as soon as Bell missed that chance as well I knew we were going we to nick it we were going we to get a goal at the end well you know the, Lanzini I'm going to be quite critical of it because I genuinely think if he could do that another thousand times I don't think it goes in. And it, I don't even think the ball hit the back of the net. Well, I didn't see it in it. It kind of hit the bar, bounced down, just kind of rolled around in the goal for a bit. But, Al, what what we, I'm going to ask you a really stupid question. What was the reaction when you scored? I couldn't believe it. It was, it was just pure elation. I mean, that is the best feeling in the world. To go from 3 0 down in the 81st minute to come back of a draw. That is what football is all about. I know about 3 0. I mean, don't worry about that. I mean, me and my. Me and my me and my brother, me and my brother just, 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 we, just, we hugged each other. It, we almost broke us, our, our sofa. It's <laughs> absolutely mental. And, and it's, just, it's, it's that feeling, which is what, it's what football is all about. People say, why, do, why is football so interesting? Why do people watch football? That is why I watch football. Well, you know, I know, I know uh, Liverpool had Istanbul, but I'm calling this Moy Istanbul. <laughs> what did you think of his dancing after the game? Was it up there with Alan Pardew's one at the FA Cup final? Or that's what that's what that's what all being that's what all winning around West Ham fans. When he first when he first appointed, I thought, oh, no, not him again. This is this is going to be rubbish. But so, but that celebration at the end shows he cares and shows he's passionate about West Ham. See, Pellegrini last last like remember we had Pellegrini. One, we wouldn't have got back into the game. And two, if we did, he just stood there on, on a touch line, not, no, no, no emotion. But to see him celebrate like that is amazing. It shows that he cares and it shows that he's passionate and he, he, he loves what he does. And that, if, you, if, if, you, if you shout as a manager, the fans will respond to you. The fans, the fans will... That's what West Ham fans like, is, but they don't care how good you are as a player or manager. If you show the passion and the fight... They'll, 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 they'll cheer for you. They'll love you. This is probably why I even stuck with Martin Noble for the last 13 years. But um, 
We're going to roll a question over to Luke. About, to be honest with you, mate, about three weeks ago, West Ham were doomed, weren't they? They looked like they was down and out. Everyone wrote them off quite early. <sighs> Look, they've had three good results. We can't, West Ham fans shouldn't get too excited, but I know they will. That's why I'm going to ask you, Luke, or not Alf. Do you think they've shown enough to stay up this year? Do you know what? Like, I think living in the area for so long, we all know about what West Ham fans are all about. Like, you know, they they have a couple of good results, and then they're on the high horse. And you know, like I, I look I look at the squad that they've got. To be honest, and I mean, they can do so much better than what they've got. But I do think they're good enough to stay in the league. But they're, they're just so inconsistent. They'll play against the likes of Spurs, and you know, say like Chelsea last season. They'll play against Liverpool where they nearly got a. a they nearly beat us at Anfield last season. And um, they'll, they'll play them sort of games and like they'll cause the teams a lot of problems with them. When they play like, you know, your Fulhams and your, you know, Southamptons at homes where you expect them to pick up three points quite comfortably, they seem to struggle. So I don't know, like they might need to change it there a little bit. But to be honest, I think they've got enough to, to stay up. I mean, maybe they, they got rid of David Moyes for three games and they were winning games and now he's come back and obviously... Uh, <laughs> They're, they're struggling to, well, they got a result on the weekend, but it's not a win really, is it? But, but you know, yeah, I think, they're, I think they're good enough to stay in the division, definitely. Alf, it seems very strange with West Ham because you never are just a team that make up the numbers. You're either on the bounce, on the edge of getting relegated, or you're having a really good year and you're pushing for Europe. I, for your heart and your blood pressure, I can't imagine that does really good things to you every year, come March and April. But... Do you think this could be the year where you kind of just fizzle out in mid-table? See, I'm, I was, I'm always of the, of the opinion that I'd rather have something to play for. I'd rather be fighting relegation for the end of the season than, than being a basic mid, mid-table team and not not not, get, not playing for anything. So if, 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 if you're fighting for Europe or you're fighting for relegation, it means more. If you're, if you're fighting, if you're Support a team that's fighting for those. So, being a West Ham fan for, for, for 30 years, I'm used to relegation battles and I love it. I absolutely love it. I support it's been that, that yo yo of being playing well and playing shit is what you is what West Ham being a West Ham fan of that. That being a football fan of that. If you can't take the lows, then you shouldn't take the highs. I think there's there's nothing more that screams passion to me when it comes to West Ham the relegation battle when Moni the owners when there's a uh, there's a West Ham fan grabbing the corner flag and running the length of the pitch waving it around. Funny enough, I think it was a white flag. I don't know if he'd surrendered the game or he was protesting. <laughs> but uh, Alf, last last question, just as we touch on West Ham, what is your? I know I speak to you away from the pod and you're quite open about the West Ham owners and that. And I'm going to reference what you say as you call them the Dildo Brothers. <laughs> how do you I'm not going to ask it seems a stupid question asking you how you feel about the board but you know we're all quite stupid people when it comes to football so I'm going to ask you what your opinion is on the board I hate them I hate them they're not football they claim to be West Ham fans but they're anything, anything but I wrote this down right so they all, all the promises they said when we moved there'll be the chairs would be the same distance as Upton Park and it wasn't they promised local businesses at Upton Park that they can move over. They didn't. They prom- you know. <laughs> Sorry, I love this. Keep going. They, we love it. <laughs> they, they, they let Collins, James Collins, go by email, and he spent eleven years at the club all together, and they let him go by email. They said they promised that they wouldn't change the badge. A year later, they changed the badge to a more com- to a more commercial badge, and it's not even that. It's the it's the the transfer policy is atrocious. You've only got one scout at the club. How can you be a Premier League club and have one scat? It's because they don't want to spend money. They don't give. They don't care. As long as the money's coming into them, and they don't give a shit. But the, I find it quite bizarre. You know, they, they've let him go via email. What if you was like me and you don't check your email? Did you just turn up to training? Exactly. Is, uh, <laughs> I can exactly. imagine that's quite an awkward moment. They they promised an elite twenty goal season striker when we moved. End up with Ashley Fletcher, Joel from Caleri and Simone Zaza, who all scored one goal between them. That's a good stat, that. To be fair, Zaza, before he came over and when he left, which is the very West Ham way, he was quite, not prolific, but he was a goal scorer. You know, he'd get you 11, 12 goals. You know, he's <laughs> every season he was quite consistent in that way. But 
Why, why is it? Why has it just not worked at West Ham? It's the owners. It's the owners. They don't bat, they didn't, they, they didn't bat Moyes in this transfer window. They they don't want to spend money in in the club. They, 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 they it's it's all these promises. They promised that I mean moved it would be family affordable football. Category A tickets go from fifty pounds to eighty pound. Right. Fair play. I can understand West Ham's fans' frustration there. It's supposed to be but... a family club. That's not family. That's not advertising the fact the families. Yeah, I can understand your point. I think we're gonna uh, we're gonna move it on there. We're gonna talk more <laughs> football before we totally get all depressed about West Ham. To be honest with you, I quite enjoyed it. But Luke, I remember talking to you before the Liverpool game, uh, a week before the Everton game. You said quite comfortably, uh, quite confidently, sorry, that you thought you'd win the game. Technically, arguably, you did win the game. You was robbed at the end. I want you to put your referee on referee hat on here. What was your opinion on the VAR? What 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 part do you want me to start with? Um, <laughs> exactly, and this is what I need to come out with. I mean, do you know what? I keep going on, like the, if we're going to go with like the letter of the law and if it's offside for the Van Dyke decision at the start, then fair enough for me. You can't score if you're elbow, and if you see the lines where they um they start the Van Dyke the lines of where he's offside, they start from his elbow. So first of all, they're drawing their own lines. What Henderson said at the, uh, the post match interview. Um, for me, Pickford's got to go. How can you not deem that a red card? Uh, I, I don't want to sound, you know, biased because I'm a Liverpool supporter, but I know everyone has their sort of ups and down moments of like if something should be a red or whatever. But that is a stonewall red card, irrelevant. If it's, he, he may get away with it because of he's a goalkeeper. Maybe if that's anywhere else on the pitch, surely that's a red. You see with Richarlison, he committed a challenge in the second half. For me, straight red card. The referee got the right decision made, and then the final decision. Well, I, I don't. I don't think I need to explain it further. Like, I mean, it, you can clearly see that there's nothing in it at all. Like, we cannot. Uh, like, you can see there's going to be Champions League ga- like Champions League games going on tonight and tomorrow, and they're going to get the VAR spot on. It's going to take them no longer than 10, 20 seconds. It takes us about four years. Like, it's literally. It's unbelievable what is going on with VAR right now in this country, and just they need to sort it out. It's, it's not it's not so much the system that's the bad thing; it's the officials that are taking part with it. Like David Coote, the, the guy who um, was on the VAR, he's obviously done them decisions which were wrong. He came out and said that he didn't know whether he was able to tell Michael Oliver to send him off. I mean, what is that all about? Um, he the decision against Man United last season with Origi, which was for me was a free kick in the middle of of the pitch and it wasn't given and he didn't give Robertson a penalty last year on the VAR as well so you, you, for me it's not so much the system you've got to look at the officials at the end of the day and they get too much protection and that's me included as a referee imagine if I was refereeing at that level I'd get a lot of protection but I mean they need to sort it out I think this is my next point just briefly coming away from the game Luke again take your Liverpool hat off and put your refereeing hat on here you know you do referee quite a few games on the weekend if you did have the help of VAR and you could go over to the monitor. Now, I don't know about you. If I had the chance of an act, like checking something again after, would your concentrations levels just slightly drop because you think, oh, maybe I can have a look at it after? Or does that put more pressure on you because you'd think, oh, well, there, it's there in black and white now. I kind of have to give it. Yeah, do you know what? Like, I, I thought about that the other day, to be honest. Like, it's Especially if you're one of the top officials and you've got the VAR in place, you know for a little bit you can... When there is a key decision that happens, like an offside or a red card, uh, potential penalty, um, in your mind, surely as a referee, must be thinking, right, maybe I can go and have a look, you know. And it, as you said, like the concentration levels might dip a little bit, but it's just, as you said, it's not in black and white. Like irrelevant if you know the, the concentration levels have dropped or not. There's a massive decision. The players are obviously disputing over something. Surely there's a guy watching this at George's Park going, right, go and have a look at the decision. That something's happened. I mean, it reminded me a lot of that uh, one in Spain last year where I think it was Real Madrid. They went to the VAR monitor room and there was no one in there. Like, what? <laughs> what, what is what is there? Any, I would love, that's what I really want to see. Like, if we're going to VAR, I want to see them actually people in there taking control of the, the decisions that are taking place. So, yeah, maybe the, 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 the concentration levels might drop, but 
for me, I, I think it's you know it's irrelevant. I think in the sense where if <clears> something <throat> happens, surely if you're unsure as a referee on the field, just go and have a look, like and clear your head, really. Yeah, I hate to say this, but I feel like we should take a leaf out of the Americans' books for the NFL. You know, I know they do stop and start the game, but when they do go and check their version of VAR, you know, you can actually hear what they're saying to each other. And I thought if they brought that into the game, I'm not saying it would have been just justify. Well, actually, no, not it's the wrong word to use. I'm not saying you'd probably agree with it then, but the referee's actions would have been a bit more justified. You can actually understand their thinking and what's been said on it. You're a bit like they're doing a right. Uh, like, yeah, exactly. Like, you wouldn't be like, oh, okay, you accept it, but you kind of, you're not like, what? what what's been said there? You're not left too confused, you know. You actually do have an answer and a bit of, you'd left not unrest, but you know what I mean. You've kind of yeah, taken like, away from the, what they're thinking. You're always going to get that, you know, even if, say, you've done it that side of it, like, say, like, I was refereeing and you're the VAR monitor and you say, right, I think it's a red card, go and send the player off. Um, at the end of the day, like if, if people can hear that communication in the stadiums, then yeah, of course you're gonna have people that don't agree with it. But there is that bit more of clarification. You can say, "All right, fair enough. Referees have had a chat, a chat about it. They've made the decision, and let's get on with it." So yeah, See, I think what that's I, a good idea to do. What, what I do in the rugby, and this is also implemented in the Australian league, is they talk. You can the, the VAR. You know, it's called TMO in rugby, but VAR. In Australia, they were in the ear of the referee. And it, it, it was a bad tackle. The referee gave it a yellow card, and the referee I went in his ear. No, no, I think you need to look at the, look at the monitor. And so he's going to the monitor, and as he's looking at the monitor, the VAR is talking it through with the referee, mm. and you can hear that on the tel- on, on the telly. So if that, if that happens, you, you, you fans will have no problem, have no argument. Well, I argue, but it's more chance of getting the decision right than, than there it's is more getting it wrong. As supporters, like, yeah. at the end of the day, as I said earlier, like, you, you might not agree with something, but I'll agree with you. But then you'll have that bit more of an understanding that the refs have actually done their job right. Yeah. So, yeah I don't know, because I think as well, we was all a bit worried that VAR would suck the life and the drama out of the game. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. I think it's caused even more drama. Mm. You know, like... Regardless, yeah. if you feel we're getting the right and wrong decisions, there's a lot more talking points. And especially when you just start a podcast, you know yourself, Luke, especially with the Liverpool one, <laughs> which we'll talk about after, it causes so much drama and it's so much points. And for me, it's making it that little bit more exciting because you go, oh, you've yeah. gone to VAR, I can't believe it. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, Alf, you made... Something more to talk about in the pub, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, like before the goal line technology got brought in and no one could talk about, oh, if this goal went in or if this stood well. But now it's like, oh, if it went to VAR, that one, or if this one's gone to VAR, like, it's so much more to talk about. Luke, I want you to leave your referee hat on just for a little bit longer. If we, if you could go back and you was refereeing that Liverpool game, what would you have done with a Pickford challenge? I know the, the game had stopped at the time. Pickford and Van Dyke didn't know. They've played effectively to the whistle. And Pickford's put in, it was a disgrace of a tackle, regardless if he meant it or not. What would your your outcome have been in that? What would you have done? Like, the first thing I would have done is, I mean, obviously the linesman in that situation, he's put his flag up. Now, me personally, obviously on a Sunday, some, most of the time I only have like my official, but if I did have like linos or, you know, VAR monitors, we all know that something went to VAR to check the offside. The first thing I would have said was check the offside, but then also check to see if anything else had happened in an off-the-ball incident, for example. I also would have consulted with my linesman to turn around and say, are you sure it's offside? And obviously, if there's anything else that you saw within that build-up, because you can clearly see that there's X, Y, Z amount of Liverpool players that are crowding around the officials. So something else has happened, not just the offside. So... I personally would have asked, I mean, the, the VAR, like, just go through every bit of phase of play within that time and obviously go from there. And I'd have, I'd have, I'd have checked the monitor. on. That's what it's there for. I think, um, was it was it Burnley last season? They um, they threatened to sue the Premier League because they paid £50 million for the monitor and it was not being used. Oh, what's, it, what's it there for? Like, it's, you know, people are, people are using it to phone uh, charge their phones. Like, you know, it's just... <laughs> Is it be, is it because the referees are scared of getting a decision wrong? Or is it because the referees are scared of, of them shown to get something wrong? 
Is that why I think that's, yeah, yeah, I think it's, they've put so much pressure on referees now because they've got all the technology in. So every time they do make a mistake now, they're on them. You know yeah. what I mean? They're just, yeah. they're on them. And especially with the Euros coming up, you know, I feel that it's even more pressure, especially the top refs. Well, the top refs are the only ones using the, ref, using the VAR. Okay, I think this is... And they're all going to want to get selected as well as their players are. So I think it just adds so much more frustration. Alf, put your referee in hat on. What are you doing about that pick for challenge? Off. Straight off? off. Straight off. I, I'd have gone to the monitor. monitor. It wasn't... Van Dijk was onside. It was obviously onside. But if, regardless of onside or offside, that is a horrendous tackle, to pull it lightly. That was awful. There's no way... It was going for the ball there. I'm sorry. It, 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 where the ball ha, ball was living at the height of the tackle. And it could, it could, it could have done a lot more damage than what he'd done. It could have ended his career. See, Alf, I just wanted to add on, like, you see what you said about, um, like, send him off, etc. cetera, blah, 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 blah. Like, with, with the, the actual challenge, like, the whistle would actually gone when Pickford had made the challenge. When in the, in the second half, when Richarlison was sent off, the whistle had gone before Richarlison had committed the challenge. And the referee sent him off. So yeah. why didn't he do that? Why didn't he exactly. do that? For the exactly. 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 It's inconsistent. Very they, inconsistent. It, 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 yeah. If you both were already blown in both in, in both scenarios, but he sent one off. But did he send? But he done that. I reckon he done that because you got the band one wrong. But it, it was it wasn't sending him off. But um, in both instances, same thing happened with the referee blowing before the tackle made. <laughs> So, yeah, Luke, I want you to take your uh, refereeing hat on now. I know you've got loads of hats sitting there today. <laughs> I want you to put your goalkeeping hat on. Oh, now, I know you have played at a decent level. Put yourself in Pickford's gloves. Is there any way you can defend him? When have you ever seen me dive out like that? I mean, it, you can't do that as a goalkeeper. I know, like, sometimes if, you know, you're running out, out of the box, for example, if, the, if you're like... 1v1 with an attacker and you're trying to get the ball first and you're out the box then I can understand if you're if you're going in a, a, a motion like that with your feet but no nah, you can't it, it's it's a red card all day long like he's in danger of the opponent great stuff great stuff I've got to agree we're going to move it on Manchester City 1 Arsenal nil. Raheem Sterling with a goal there was a game full of chances. I personally, I watched this on my birthday it nearly sent me to sleep I wasn't that interested in it <laughs> uh, from another from another dodgy refereeing decision, what did we think of Walker's high foot on Abamyang? Is it Abamyang? We've got Abamyang written down. Alf, what did you think? Did you think it was a penalty? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of whether he got the ball or not, his, his foot should not be that high. Should not be that I mean, that was a couple of seasons ago, Manley got sent off for the exact same thing. Yeah, that was the tackle on Edison, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that it was a lot more horrific, serious, to be fair. Some, yeah, because if Carl didn't get, Walker didn't get the ball, it would have got it would have got a bang man's face. That's how high it's, it, 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 it's, it's more horrific in that sense because Mane made contact. Yeah. Obviously if, if Walker makes contact, I think it was um I think it's Gabriel, I think it was in the box. But it's obviously if he makes contact, then obviously it's a much more talking point about it. But it's irrelevant if he makes contact or not. Should be that high. Uh Luke, take off your goalkeeping hat, put back on your refereeing hat. Do you give the penalty? All day long. Go to VAR, check the penalty and and the same thing again, what happened at Man United, the game game had finished, they went to VAR, gave the penalty again against Brighton, blew up for half time, they should have got the VAR and had a look. I want to quickly just talk about Aubameyang. I, I did want to talk about your brother today, obviously, because he's a big Arsenal fan. I know he's not available at the moment, but um, is this the, he missed a, quite a few chances. You know, is this the reason why Arsenal ended up with him and one of the elite clubs never actually come in for him? Because... Look, he's a goal scorer. He's a good player. I wouldn't say he's an elite player. Okay, compared to us, he's an elite player. But in the context of Arsenal and where they want to go, he does miss. I don't think he's consistent enough. I know he's always up there in the top goal scoring chance. But if you look at the Olympiacos game where they probably got knocked out because of that, of the city he missed, you know, it, he, does, he does score a lot of goals. It's the reason why he's up in the charts. But I feel we should be getting in a lot more of all the chances he misses. Alf, from uh, from the chances he did miss, he could have probably won the game. How, what do you feel of Aubameyang? Do you feel he's the guy to take Arsenal to the next level or should they move on? I mean, he's in his 30s now, isn't he? Was he 32? Yeah. But 
I mean, you could put it this way. Man I would love a Bang Yang in their team. Because they haven't... But Bang Yang is still good enough to get into a top four team. Not saying that Liverpool or City. But before Chelsea bought Werner... I think even, even now, Chelsea would like him. No, I would like him. Obviously, he wouldn't get in Spurs team. But he's, he's, he's quality. I love a Bang Yang. He's not, he can play on the wing. He can play out front. His partnership with Lacazette is is, is really good. Yeah, I'd, uh, I've got to oh, give a big shout out to uh, Leno. Leno played really well. He made quite a few saves. Luke, I hope your goalkeeping hat's back on. <laughs> what do you think of Leno? I'd just, do you th- I'd just see if hats around. <laughs> do you genuinely think that he's quite unlucky to the fact that he's got De Stegen and Neymar in front of him in the Germany's team? Yeah. Um... I mean, I think Neuer's sort of... I, mean, I know he's obviously still a world-class keeper, but I think he's sort of maybe coming to the end of his international career. Um, to Stegen, I, I personally, I think to Stegen is quite... He's a good keeper, but I, I don't think he's nowhere near that level for me of a Neuer. I think he concedes a lot of goals, especially at Barcelona. Um, I think Leno is quite unlucky. I think considering the club he does play for compared to, say, a Barcelona or Bayern Munich, he might not get that bit more sort of bit more of a nod sort of thing for the selection. I think he's a very, very underrated goalkeeper in the Premier League, Burn Leno. And in my opinion, I think he's one of the top top three goalkeepers in the Premier League. On their on his day. I like him. I like, I like I think one him. very big point I would like to make, and I'll say this now, going into the Euros, international managers always bang on that if you want to play for your country, you've got to play for your club. Totally understandable. For me, if I was the German manager, I would be playing Leno. The reason being, Neuer plays for Bayern Munich, Tristegen plays for Barcelona. Let's be totally honest. I know they're on the field, but are they making the same amount of saves and involved in the same amount of action as Leno? Well, Alf, the, what would you do? We'll look at the Champions League final. Neuer made that great, made that save that following the game. Really, because it was one 0 wasn't it? If he if he didn't make that good save, then it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been a different game. He's a he's a, he's a big moment goalkeeper, but he is coming to, getting old now, and he is probably going to be more prone to you know, fitness and injuries and that. Leno is a very very good keeper. He's a good keeper. He's playing he, against City, made some great saves against City. I think he's very unlucky. You're right. He's unlucky to have to those two keepers in this, at the same time but he is still young Leno he's what is he 26 27 something like that so for a goalkeeper that, 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 that is young so I reckon he will be in the German, in, in, in the German team because he's he's, he's he's a good keeper he's a great shot stopper he's been at, at a dodgy start to Arsenal but he's adapted well and now he's making really, really good saves cool we're going to move it on to the uh to the Man City game. One last point I will make of Arsenal. Arsenal fans, stop being critical to me, texting me, moaning about I don't give you any praise. Good luck finishing in the top 10, battling with West Ham. Uh, <laughs> Luke, have Man City sorted out their centre-back crisis, bringing in Ake and Diaz? God, they've done better than us. Um, I, I, yeah, of course they have. Like, they, they made... I'm not saying the the full reason why they didn't win the title last season was, you know, the, because we were so good last season. The, one of the main concerns for them was their defensive problems. Like, they had a very similar thing what's happened to us with Van Dijk. Laporte was out for five months. Um, they didn't replace Vincent Company, And they obviously only had, what, John Stones last season and Otamendi. So, bringing in Diaz, for me, who's a very, very good defender... He's brought in Ake, good squad depth. You know, he's going to play a lot of games, but very good squad depth when Laporte's fit. Um, by far, like, you know, Man City have, in my opinion, done what they should have done last season. And it makes it, for me, with the Van Dijk injury, it makes them favourites to win the title this season. So, um, we done, we've done the similar thing. You know, we've had the injury and we didn't replace Lovren and we're kind of stuck now because... We're putting Fabinho in at four push four, four choice centre back, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long season for Liverpool, I think. I think we'll get in the top four, but I, I personally think with that Van Dyke injury, the title is gonna be a very much more difficult task to do this season. You can season. still score a lot of goals there. 
You can still yeah, we can, we can concede a lot of goals. I mean, we, yeah. I went through the Brendan Rodgers era. We'd score three and concede three. You know, like, we, we all went with Palace. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, yeah. It is, yeah. It is what it is. You, you need a good goalkeeper and a good back four in front of you. And Van Dijk is the main reason why, one of the reasons why we won the league last season. We'll uh, we'll move we'll uh, come back to the title debate as that is a very big part of my plan today. So uh, before you try to sabotage me, we'll, <laughs> we'll move it on. Quick mention to uh, Connor Cody last night, who thought he was man in the match in his interview with Sky Sports. What an idiot! But fair play to them getting a win at Leeds. Uh, another quick mention: Chelsea free, Southampton free. Alf, I've spoke quite critical on here of Lampard. I think he probably will be the first to go as a West Ham fan. How do you feel he's getting on as manager? If he wasn't a legend, he'd have been gone last season. Yeah. Because Savvy got fourth place and the Europa League and they sacked him. Yeah, but Sari was able to bring players in. Uh, yeah, but yeah, but, uh, uh, but Chelsea still expect, they still expect higher than fourth, whether they can bring Chelsea players in or not. Yeah. They still had good players, good players good enough to get Third, that third spot. You've got to remember that they were third for a long time in that season last season. And they let yeah, it sit I, in I know he yeah. still got fourth in that, but you know, I think if I was a Chelsea fan, Luke, I know you do know probably a few Chelsea fans. I'd be frustrated if I was a Chelsea fan to the fact that they've had to take that year out from transfers and they probably they decorated it well, you know. They they said, Oh, we're gonna change the philosophy of the club, we're gonna look at youth and stuff like that. As soon as this transfer ban is gone, they've brought in such so many big names. Exactly. Lou, do you feel that can be quite damaging for a football club, changing the philosophy so many times over a short period of space? Um, I mean, I've always fought with Chelsea. I think over the last, you know, since Abramovich bought the club, you know, Mourinho had his massive success. And obviously over the years, they were sacking managers, sacking managers, but they were always that successful. They were always winning leagues. They were always winning trophies. They won the Champions League. Abramovich finally got but I do think from last season, I think Lampard's done an excellent job last season getting him into that top four. Um, obviously, unlucky not to win the FA Cup last season. But um, spending all that money, obviously, it's mostly the money they, they got from Hazard and Morata. Um, obviously, they've built a squad, which we've seen with the likes of Tottenham did with when they sold Bale, when they brought in. I mean, I always call him Goldardo um, and you know, all the other players that they brought in. Um and obviously it didn't work for him. Um, we had it when we sold Suarez. We we brought in Balotelli on a like a, an absolute panic buyer. People like Lambert and Chelsea. Hope like I can see regarding the signings they've made. I think they're better signings for the squad going forward for them. But as you said, I think it might damage their sort of philosophy for this season, especially they don't get in that top four. Chelsea is in serious a lot of trouble that part this year. See, I think it's his transfer policy is what's causing the problems at the moment. They spent all that money on attacking players, but it's the defence they needed to, to improve. They didn't. Alonso, Alonso is slow, slow in there. Lost his pace. He's not good enough. As, same with Aspiquetta. But then they bought a thir- got in a thirty-six-year-old Thiago Silva on a free when they should have been all out to buy someone like Declan Rice who, who who can play second centre back and play it well. If I have... Declan Rice and Thiago Silva, though, to be honest, I, I would. Especially on a free transfer, I would be a bit... I don't know. Thiago Silva's 36-year-old player who hasn't got any pace playing in the Premier League for, 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 for the first time. It's not just that different to the French League where you can get away not having a bit of pace, but you can't in the Premier League. He's And it's that decision-making. I think he's, he's still young and he's still learning. So maybe the Chelsea job... You know, time will tell if it came too soon or not. I mean, he's... he's it's in the top four, and if he gets top four this season, then you've got to say, well, he's done, he's, he's, he's done well. But he has to improve the defence. Everyone can see it. Everyone can see that it, it, it's been made in the defence, and he hasn't. My next point on this would be, are these Lampard signings, though? Mm-hmm. Good question. Um, I, <sighs> I mean, what... what I, I reckon they are. I don't see why they're bringing Lampard in, knowing no, Lampard will go there, knowing that when the transfer ban's finished, that he can't bring his own players. Do you, do you think like he probably said to Abramovich, say maybe halfway through last season, and went, 
right, these obviously I've not been able to spend any money. These are the group of players I've got. And obviously he might have a plan for next season if they got into that top four, which he did. And then Abramovich said, all right, you know, there's 100 or 150 million. Go and spend whoever you want to get. So part of me in that sense thinks maybe, but I do think that because they sold Hazard, it's a similar thing with the Tottenham and Liverpool thing when they lost their best player. He has to replace them with a, a, a good squad to compete at a level of Champions League football and potentially in a year or two, maybe challenging for the league. So, kind of me thinks it is, but some of it, I don't. So, yeah. I don't, well, well, about that bit. I mean, we've done well to get top four with the young youngsters that you've got. And you said, that, well, we're going to give youngsters a chance, give these youngsters a chance. But as Bob said, as soon as the transfer, transfer window ban was lifted, they brought in these players, these jet, these like Havertz and Werner. What does, what does that, what does that do to the youngsters who earned that top four? The, the, the Abraham's and the uh, Mounts or Bradford are going to play, but you know, Barkley played on that season as well. They go to West Ham. <laughs> I, I, I'd have been all over <laughs> Barkley, mate. If I'm honest. If uh, to possible. be fair, they go to bigger clubs in Claret Blue like Aston Villa. But uh, <laughs> go with. <laughs> going on to the main part of the pod and uh, I'm quite looking forward to this because Luke's on it we'll start with Alfie we'll save Luke till last Alf who's your top four and I, think, I want to I want to feed from fourth third second and champions I, Go. Fourth will be, I think fourth will be Spurs because they're firing on all cylinders at the moment even though they're in their lead they're still banging in six goals for Old Trafford um, third will be United. Okay. I'm not quite a bit more. Uh huh. Are they getting more penalties than points this year, Man United? Sorry, no. I've, 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 sorry, no. Sorry. Third will be third. United will be fourth. Liverpool second, and City top. I just think that Van, that Van Dijk injury is 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 massive. It's it's like. I know, no, obviously, we know we find the but if we hadn't had a wife last season, we'd have been down. It's the same thing. Van Dyke, Van Dyke, and Van Dyke makes them that so much weaker. Do you, it's, I don't know. I think it's going to be a very good uh, test for Klopp to see how he can yeah. get on without it. In his post-match interview, he was praising Gomez so much straight away, even though he did have that mirror at Villa. I think he's kind of realised now that Gomez is going to have to be one of the main men this year at the back. But I don't know. It's a very long season. You know, we've still got the January window. You know, I think Liverpool board might think, oh, actually, we're probably going to need not to replace him, but to bring someone in for now. And I don't know. If I was a Liverpool owner, I'd probably be looking to do that, regardless of what the manager says. But again, that's just me going totally against what I said with Chelsea and Lampard. Luke, if you was a Liverpool owner, what would you, or even the manager, and you look at that Van Dijk situation, he's probably going to be out for most of the season, probably 90% of it now. What do you do in that scenario? He's got to bring a replacement in. That was, that was where Jurgen Klopp went wrong in the window. He, he brought in the areas we addressed with Thiago and uh, Jota. We, we addressed them areas really well. But for me, when he uh, earlier, when he sold Lovren, um, I was more than happy for Lovren to go, but you, you can't take as what Man City done last season. You need four fit centre-backs for the Premier League, especially if you're challenging for the league. And now he's only got two recognised centre-backs that are good enough at that level. So, for me, he's got a bad time on in January. My next question, who? A um, lot of rumours about, I've seen, even from the summer, about Ben White at Leeds. Looks a good youngster mm. coming through. Um, there apparently there's a release clause as well for the Leipzig centre back. Is it Umpankano? I thought that was quite high though, wasn't it? I thought it was like eighty odd million. I see something. It might be reduced to around forty five in January, but depending. I mean, obviously, if that's true or not. Um, I mean, we and then I saw I saw one last night about Connor Cody, but I just don't think Cody would fit into our. I I, I, I like him, but I just don't think he'd fit into our sort of style of play. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do like Ben White. I, I'd, I'd like him at Liverpool, especially now there's an opportunity there which he can just grasp if he went there. So, yeah, why not? Like, why not keep it within the Premier League as well? Alfie, you've given me your reasons on the top four. Where would West Ham going to finish this year? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, West Ham are so inconsistent that you can't predict. But I, I start, for, for, for the first four new cards game, I thought we were going to go down. 
I thought I said we were one of the teams that would go down. But then the Arsenal game came along, and, that, and then I thought we'll prepare that like, like that more often. We'll be all right. And then three games passed. We play. We've got good results. So I don't. I don't think we'll finish up off. I think. I think. Or we'll, I don't think we'll be. I think anyway from 17th to about 13th. If it will finish you. So you're hoping for that year of irrelevance and just making up the numbers, like I said, you probably never ever actually do. It's you got to be realistic, haven't you? You got. Oh, of course, of course. I'm not going to say like 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 those blokes, those blokes on YouTube saying we're in the top six. It's just, it's not going to happen, you know. It, it, but we shouldn't be 17th with the players that we got. But this is West Ham. West Ham are famous for famous for doing just that, you know, being inconsistent, not knowing what West Ham's going to turn up. Well, I personally hope you just burn in the relegation zone and go down to the championship. <laughs> From one deluded West Ham fan, let's go to a deluded Liverpool fan. Luke, give me your top four. Where's the deluded Liverpool fan, mate? Oh, oh all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know what? Um from the start of the season, from before all the kicks, my top four was fourth was Arsenal, third was Chelsea, uh, Manchester City second, and Liverpool to win the league. But because of what's happened to Van Dijk, I'm going to stick with it, but I'm going to give it probably <laughs> until Christmas, and then I might change my decision from then. I've got, <laughs> I've got to have that bit of belief, and we scored yeah. goals. You know, we, we, I, I still think. We're good enough defensively. We've got a much better goalkeeper when he's playing. You know, we ain't got like to drop a lot and carry us. You know, we've got a, a decent, sort of, we've got a decent sort of level at the back. So I'm going to stick with Liverpool, but obviously at Christmas it could change. And even now, even though you've seen the uh, performances and the results, and what? Sorry, we're eight games in now. I think Is it eight games, or I'm not too sure. I should have done my research on it. And you're still willing to write off Spurs. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think they're consistent enough. I mean, they threw away their title charge in six minutes against West Ham. Like, it, it's little, <laughs> it's little, I mean, all jokes aside, like, all serious, like, for me, that they, they just can't get over the line. Like, I think since Mourinho, for me, was brought in because of that, like, get the gritty 1-0s or the 2-1s. When he was at Chelsea, even at United, he was playing boring football. But for some reason at Spurs, I just haven't seen him do that. He's been there, what, over a year now, nearly, so, or near enough a year, and I know it takes time, but for me, I just don't think they're going to get into that top four. You never know, like, they, they could have a massive injury like Harry Kane, he's obviously prone to some injuries, yes. so, no, I, I think Arsenal are going to do it this year, I think top four Arteta's doing a very good job there. It's really strange, because Jose Mourinho's sides, they're not known for conceding goals, and when they did start to leak goals at United... He was getting so much criticism from it. But I think because they've been so good attacking, it's been so fluent and Kane and Song, you know, it's been so good. I think it's kind of taken a back seat. Mm. But, you know, I'm hoping it they don't have that effect that Chelsea did, but they just can't sort it out, you know. I think they missed out on... I'm going to butcher this every time I say it. Screen right. I think they missed out on him massively. Mm. But I think, you know, I think Liverpool might have a bit of competition for the few names of the centre-backs that you did say. Because, you know, I feel like they are backing Mourinho. Now they do have the money. But, again, that is a totally different argument. Uh, going on to relegation, Luke, who are your free to go down? I didn't ask you this in the notes because I want to put you on the spot about it. But who do you feel you're free to go down? I mean, you know, I'd like to go down, finish 20th. Um, they would start with a W and they end with an M. Um, I'm gonna... West Brom. West Brom. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could have been more ramps. Well, actually, no, they don't finish. Wonder, isn't it? Um, oh, do you know what? I think West Brom are going to go down. I think they're going to finish bottom. Um, oh... Tough one. Sheffield United, I think, are going to go down this year. They really look in trouble. I said this at the start of the season. Yeah, and the second season syndrome. Yeah, it? yeah. And um, it's a toss up. And it's a toss up between three clubs. I'm going to go with Fulham, Burnley, and I'm going to. I mean, I would say maybe West Ham, but I think West Ham are going to sort of dig themselves out of it. And this is going to be a real shot in the dark. I don't think they're going to go down, but they're going to be in a lot of trouble this year. I'm looking at Leicester. 
for me, I, I, it's sound, I sound probably deluded, but have you what Rogers? He's under a lot of pressure. Told you. If they Not don't start, that's more like shooting snuff wife or blindfolded, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you get to support West Ham all your life, but they... <laughs> no, I, I, I don't think they'll go down. But I just think Leicester are going to be in and around that sort of area this year. So you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Leicester are in a sort of battle the last sort of ten games of the season. They're a couple of points above it. But I can know... see it. Yeah, I've had some few shocking results so far. But you know, I think time will tell. That's quite an interesting. Sh- you shot your shot. I'm so we'll... <laughs> time, what a load of shit Luke's talking, but you know, it, it's for me. It, it just remember what I said. You know, if it happens, it happens, isn't it? You know, if not, don't invite me back on the podcast. <laughs> Alf, who are your three to go down? I think Fulham, West Brom. I mean, Burnley hasn't got a point. Hasn't got a point yet. I've only played three games, but I don't know. I think it's either Sheffield United or Burnley. Yeah, I can see where you're coming from. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Like, I think, I personally think it's going to be Fulham. I think it'd be West Brom. And I'm not, for that third space, I'm not too sure because going against what you said with Burnley, I know they haven't picked up a point yet and they're struggling, but this probably goes against what I'm saying with West Brom. I think one thing that is going for him, if you look at Luton last year, right, I know it's a totally different league. It's good to be happy, awful now, because if you're having a bad start now, you still have a lot of time to sort it out. Yeah. When it comes to February, March, April, if you're in the mud then, you know, you haven't got much time and you start to panic and you don't have confidence on the ball, you, you start to panic, you just start playing a much simpler game, which is fine. But in the Premier League, you need that moment of magic, yeah. regardless if it's Sheffield United or Burnley, you do need that moment that moment of magic. And if I'm paying £15 to watch it, there has to be a moment of magic in every game now. <laughs> I feel there has to be a new rule in the game. But, uh, yeah, I'm not too sure on my third team. I said West Brom, Fulham, and yeah, actually, yeah, Sheffield United. I know they're all down there at the moment, but it's that whole second scene, second season syndrome thing. I've never really called it in the Premier League, but I've just always had these weird feelings. Like when Leighton Orient lost the playoff final, I kind of knew we'd go down the next year. Swindon, they lost the playoff final. I knew they'd go down next year. I don't know why. I always have these weird feelings with clubs and nine out of ten times it seems to come off. But again, look, who knows? As I said, they've still got a lot of time to rebuild and recoup. But going on to my next point, Luke, Fulham don't really get a mention on this pod. I know you're quite close with a Fulham fan, Scott. If you're watching, hi, Scott. But uh, what are your thoughts on Fulham? Because I can imagine you do watch them quite a bit just so you can have that interaction with him. They're a dog, they're a dog, mate. They really no, <laughs> I don't, like honestly, um they defensively they need a lot of work. They really do. Um I, I we, we, we had a we've had a lot of chats about Fulham, you know, they they're a very, very good possession team. Um they re- heavily rely on Mitrovic for their goals. They need to change that this season, especially in the Premier League. You do need like extra goal scorers to keep them in the Premier League. That's their aim. Um, yeah, I just, I, they're, they're just a funny, funny team to sort of watch. Like they could be unbelievable one game and then go on a run of about five games where like you just they're awful. I mean, they've they've ta- they've, they've finally made the decision to take Hector out and they've put um, Ream at the back with Lamarch and. and the goals are dry. Like they're, they're now only conceding maybe one, possibly two goals a game. I mean, with Hector at the back, it was like a liability. It was, and it, it, I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in the dark here. He was calling him last season. He called him the Championship Van Dyke last season, <laughs> and I don't know. Like compared, I mean, it may have been in the Championship, but Premier League a different ball game. So you see, that's it. That's a difference in golf and the quality of the Premier League and the Championship. Because last year, Fulham was so hard to score against. Mm. But they, this season, so far, they 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 they're almost like the ripping boys. To, to, to be fair, like remember two years ago when they came to the Premier League and they spent all that money on like yeah. they spent the money on Seri, um and obviously there was one or two other players that they bought for a ridiculous amount of money and it just didn't work for them. And this season, I think Scott Parker's addressed that and said, right, we're going to have to stick with the core players we've got and. We're going to have to bring in some investments, but we obviously know it's going to be difficult and we can't go ahead spending all that money and putting a bit more faith in their players that got them into the division last year. I mean, you know, uh, 
healthy like they they let Fredericks go to West Ham and he's been one of your better players I think from, from last I season. think I think he looks like a free transfer if I'm honest mate yeah but for me I think it's a good signing for you like and Fulham have let him go and that's one of the problems where they why they obviously possibly didn't stand the league the first time round. so maybe they've learned the lesson this time yeah I, I think... hope they stay up but I, I, it's gonna be difficult for them. well gents we're gonna wrap it up there Alf thanks for joining today Luke, no, I, thanks for having thanks me. for jumping on the pod today no problem. Luke, I know you do a podcast. You have 30 seconds to sell the pod to me. Um, so it's uh, it's called 1892 Reds Podcast. I've only just started it uh, for the last couple of weeks. Um, obviously mainly based around Liverpool Football Club, but of course we do get other clubs involved around the Premier League and stuff. And, and yeah, just everyone hopefully to listen and yeah, go from there basically. That's about it really, that's all I can say. So I'll, uh, I'll be dropping it in, the, in our bio. Please make sure you subscribe to us as well as them. Don't go and sub to me if you ain't sub to me. Only joke. <laughs> Alf, you got anything you want to shout out? Or... Not really, mate. Um, thanks for having me on, on, on the pod. It's, I've enjoyed it. Um, no worries. Next time I need to do the West Ham fan. I know there's loads of them, but I know where to come. <laughs> uh, I work with you, mate. So, you know, I'll, I'm always close by. <laughs> uh, Alfie's Twitter will be in the bio. My Twitter will be in the bio. Luke's will be in the bio as well as his YouTube, is it YouTube? You want YouTube in there or do you want a Spotify? Um, you can put both in there. We'll put think. both in there. What a shout. Yeah, Who would have thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> think about these <laughs> Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video and peace. See you all next week. Take care. Cheers, boys.